Hello everyone. In this video, we will study dihybrid cross. Now, di always means two, and hybrid means crossing together. So we will be taking two characters in this cross, right? In dihybrid cross, one more thing you must know that three Mendel laws they are applicable in the case of dihybrid cross, and their names are law of dominance second one is law of segregation and the third law is law of independent assortment so these are the laws which were given by mendel and that is why they are also known as mendel laws in dihybrid cross all the three are applicable i would be recording a separate video on all the three laws so that you can have a concept of clarity in the case of mono hybrid cross this is very important to know that which laws are applicable so this law of dominance is applicable in the case of mono hybrid cross and law of segregation is also applicable so we will move ahead now with the dihybrid cross in dihybrid cross we have to take two characters and then only this cross will be applicable so one character we have taken seed shape and the another character which we have taken is the seed color now just to recollect seed shape was available in two traits one was the dominant and another was the recessive the dominant was the round and the recessive was the wrinkled shape similarly seed color was also available in the contrasting traits one trait was dominant and another was recessive if you talk about the dominant seed color then it was yellow and the recessive seed color was green so while taking the genotype you will take capital r capital r for the dominant trait you will take small r small r for the recessive one for the dominant seed color Please trait don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel don't forget to press the bell icon for the recent updates you will use capital y capital y and for the recessive one you will use small y small y now let's get started with the genetic cross we would be writing parents here we will be writing the parental genotype of male and suppose we have considered that male parent with homozygous dominant condition that means that parent had produced round seeds and they were yellow in color whereas the female parent had both the recessive characters that is why it is written as small r small r and small y small y means the phenotype would be wrinkled seeds and they must be green in color now as i said in the mono hybrid cross that during the gamete formation out of these two capital r's only one r will come and out of these two y's only one y will go in the gamete so which law is applicable here which is resulting in the formation of gametes this is law of segregation study this in a separate video similarly law of segregation will be applicable on the female parent too and this will result in the formation of the gametes with small r and y in it when fertilization is going to happen the male gamete will be uniting with the female one and this will result in the formation of filial generation 1 or the f1 generation so we will just mix their alleles and it will give us capital r small r 
capital Y, small y. Now, what would be the phenotype here? That means 100% individuals, they will be with round seeds because one dominant allele is present and they will be yellow in color. Means all the offsprings that will be produced in the F1 generation, they will be round in shape and the seeds will be yellow in color. Now, as we have done in the monohybrid cross, we will work out for the F2 generation in dihybrid cross also. So, this will give us F1. With F1, it will give us F2 generation. That means we have to do selfing. We have to do self-pollination. So, when we will do self-pollination, the genotype will be written as capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. And it will be crossed with capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Now here I would like to discuss one more thing. How to find the number of gametes? Because we may get confused. In monohybrids, it was easy. Because the allelic combinations were less in number. Now how to find the gametes? There is another formula. There is another trick that will help you. So, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, if this is the genotype of the parent, then we can calculate the gametes by the formula 2 to the power n, where n refers to the number of heterozygous pairs. Heterozygous pairs means the pairs that have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So, here in this case, you can see that capital R is dominant allele and small r is recessive. So, this is our first heterozygous pair and this is our second heterozygous pair because this contains dominant allele and this small y is the recessive allele. So, here in this case, the value of n is 2 and if we put it in the formula 2 to the power n, it will become 2 to the power 2 and ultimately we will get 4 as the answer. That means 4 gametes are possible in this case. How to work out for these gametes now? We will write capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. First we will cross this r with this y. This will give us the gamete number 1 which would be capital R, capital Y. Next time we will cross this capital R with small y and this will give us second gamete as capital R small y. Then we will cross this R with this y and this will give us the gamete small r capital Y and then with this R and this y. So this is small r and small y. So these are our four gametes. This is gamete number one, two, three, and 4. So, with this type of parent, which is capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, we have received 4 gametes and these are our gametes. By calculation also, we found out that 4 gametes will form in this case and hence we have proved 2. We have capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. We have another parent also with the same genotype because we are producing F2 generation and F2 generation is attained by selfing or self-pollination of the F1 generation. We know that the gametes in this case will be capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y and small r, small y. These gametes are formed again by the application of the law which was known as law of segregation. So law of segregation will be happening in the male parent also and it will happen in the female parent also. Because the genotype of male and female they are similar then of course the gametes formed by them will also be similar. So, we will write on the gametes and then we will construct a Punnett square as we have done in the monohybrid cross. We have to write four gametes 
on the x axis and 4 gametes on the y axis. So here on the x axis we are going to write the male gamete and these are our male gametes capital R capital Y capital R small y small r capital Y small r small y. Similar type of gametes were found in the female parent also. So we would be writing the same on the y axis. Now how we have to move ahead? We will first cross this with this. So this will give us capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. Then we will cross this individual with this one and this will give us capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. Then we will cross this individual with this one and this will give us capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y. Then we will cross this individual with this one. It will give us capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Make sure whenever dominant allele and recessive allele they are coming together, always write dominant allele first because this is a rule. Now we have to cross this with this and this will give us capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. Then we will do cross this with the above one. That means first we have to take individual from the left column and then from the male gamete. So it will become here capital R, capital R, small y, small y. Then we will do the crossing of this with this and it will give us capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Then move ahead in a similar fashion and it will give you capital R, small r, small y, small y. Then here you have to cross this individual with this one and it will give us small r, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Again, move in a similar fashion from up to down order and you will receive the genotypes which I am writing now. Now we are coming on to the last column and it will be capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, small y, small y, small r, small r, capital Y, small y and then in the end we will get small r, small r and small y, small y. Again, you need to have a practice of it because if you will write the genotype wrong, your ratios will come wrong and you will get a zero in exam. So please do practice how to form the offsprings in the Punit square. Once you finish this, do write the phenotypes also. Here one dominant allele is definitely there to give the dominant expression but here we have two so of course it will be round and here also dominant alleles are there so expression would be yellow. Here also the expression will be round because dominant alleles are there and one dominant allele is also there that is why the expression will be yellow. Same way you need to go ahead and start writing the phenotype in each square so it will be round and yellow. Here also it will be round and yellow. Here it will be round but it will be green because no dominant allele is present. This will also be round and yellow. This will be round and it will be green because there is no dominant allele for the yellow one. Here also it will be round and yellow. Here also it will be round and yellow. This will be again round and yellow. Right? This will be round and green because the dominant allele again here is missing for the yellow one. Here it is a small r and small r means wrinkle. Capital Y means yellow. Small r again means wrinkled and capital Y again means yellow. Here it will be wrinkled again it will be yellow because no dominant allele for the seed shape. But yes, it is there for the seed color. And the last one will have the phenotype of wrinkled and green. You have to practice till here. In next video, we will find out the phenotypic and genotypic ratio of the dihybrid cross. Thank you.